morning, the man convicted of killing 10 black people in a racist attack at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, will learn his fate in state court. The suspect is set to be sentenced today to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He pleaded guilty to more than a dozen state charges, including 10 first-degree murder counts, as well as domestic terrorism charges. Family members of the victims are expected to give statements at the sentencing. Meanwhile, the survivors of that shooting are still healing from the trauma of that attack last May. Here with us today to share her story is Fragrance Harris Stanfield. Fragrance and her daughter were working at the Topps Friendly Market when this tragedy unfolded. Fragrance, the gunman in the shooting will be sentenced to life in prison today. How do you feel about that punishment? Um, I feel good that um, he will get life in prison uh, with no possibility of parole. I think that is very appropriate for the situation. And the government, the gunman is expected to speak in court. What are you wanting to hear from him when he makes a statement? There's nothing. <laughs> I, absolutely nothing I want to hear from him, honestly. I don't want to see him. I'm not going. I do not want to see the gunman. I don't want to hear anything that he has to say, honestly. And this is just such a, a remarkable story of survival. Not only was this a traumatic experience for you, but your daughter as well. How are you both coping right now? Um, We are uh, doing better than we were, uh, of course, over time. Um, it's been extremely challenging and we still have quite a ways to go to um, just try to reassemble our lives. Um, it's, it's not even just the shooting itself, but everything that has uh, happened since then, uh, knowing the reasons why this particular store was chosen, this particular neighborhood, um, that whole issue um, dealing with the city of Buffalo, dealing with the resiliency center that they've put in place and the struggles with politics and uh, the store and uh, things of that nature, it's been extremely challenging. What, what do you mean by the politics? Can you expand on that? Uh, yes, I can explain that uh, millions of dollars has come into the city of Buffalo as a result of this horrific tragedy um, that's happened. Um, the survivors have been, uh, the survivors who were present and actually experienced the tragedy have been overlooked in a lot of ways um, because we are alive. Um, we were told to our faces by even the National Compassion Fund and others that since we're still alive, we can just get over it and move on with our lives, um, you know, and they're really only concerned about the families of those who died. Um, we've been harassed by people about um, just even trying to get help and things of that nature. Um, and the sad part is um, for those of us who were working at the store, I mean, we were targets of this shooting and it's attempted murder. And even in the state trial, we are not included. Just so you know, there are no counts for us um, for the attempted murder of over 60 people. It's only um, for the murder of 10. Yeah, and a traumatic so experience, a nonetheless. I, I'm just, I feel so yeah. awful for you that you're subjected to harassment yeah. for this. And of course, you decided not to yeah. return. We understand <laughs> your daughter did. Are you ever going to be able to go back there? Yes. <laughs> um, I struggle just to go to the store. Um, I do go and, and take my daughter to work sometimes or pick her up and I am, my anxiety is high. Um, it's, it's really challenging for me to be in the vicinity of the store, to drive by the store, to see it, uh, seeing the pictures that you're showing. Um, it's, it's all very tough for me and in any store. I have a limited time that I can be inside of a grocery store mm. at all. 
and um, even my children um, who go with me. I, I usually don't go to the store alone. Most people who are my friends and in my circle, they know I do not. I do not shop alone anymore. Um, and they go with me and they know I basically have a time limit. So once we get to that time, I'm like, okay, let's get out of this store. Let's go. Let's check out. Let's go. And everybody like starts to move quickly because I just, you know, I need some breathing techniques and, and some things. It's, it's just really, it's really tough for me still. That's so difficult because you can't just not go to a grocery store right. and get groceries. Like you have to go to these places. It's such a basic thing to do. It, it really, the whole case sent waves throughout the entire world, I would like to say. I actually, as a side note, had to seek therapy myself after this because it's such a regular thing to do to just go to the market and make groceries. Have you actually, have you been able to find counseling right. for yourself? Uh, yes, I am in therapy. Um, it does help to have that. Um, I have had like one week in, during my sessions where I had to miss therapy and it was definitely a struggle. Um, I have some some other people in the community and some other agencies who do help, you know, fill in the gap um, for that. So we have a couple of agencies that are really stepping in and doing their best. Um, my issues, uh, like I said, with the politics and things is that we actually have a resiliency center here in Buffalo and it happens. They established one wherever there's a mass shooting and they're supposed to supply services. And I was told by some of the workers who came into town that it's interesting. Buffalo has all of the things that they would usually have to set up. We already had it here. The problem is access. Um, and much like the reason why this particular neighborhood or this store was chosen is because of the lack of access to fresh food without the store. That's why the store opened so quickly after the shooting. It opened in just two months after the shooting, which was devastating to us, um, devastating to the community, but also because it's a food desert. Um, but all these other services that we have, you know, therapy and um, financial assistance services and things like that, um, that are supposed to be given to the survivors and and those who lost family members is, it's being given to the entire city, number one. Um, and we're always sharing everything with the community. We barely have any spaces that are just for us to really address what we're going through. Um, it's everything's done as a community thing so that we can be more inclusive, which who wants to exclude, of course, mm -hmm. but if you don't include those who are directly impacted and most impacted, then how do we really heal from what we've gone through? Such a good point. Fragrance, I just want to acknowledge you for having the courage. I know this is not an easy thing to do to come on live television to talk about this experience. Uh, we really do appreciate it, and we are so glad that you are doing well and getting better. Thank you so much. Thank you.